Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. I'm going to try and talk a little soft today because uh, it's rather early in the morning. I actually looked at my clock when I got up. It was 2.22. <laughs> I don't know whether that means anything, but <clears throat> I had uh, early this morning, I had uh, um, a dream and I think I needed to share it as soon as possible. I have a lot of Bible verses to read, so um, please bear with me. I'm going to read them first. Um, and mostly from the book of Esther. Uh, I, I think this is a very important dream, but I'm first going to read these Bible verses, and like I said, most of them are from the book of Esther. Uh, starting with Esther, starting at chapter 3, and starting at verse 6. Uh, this is talking of Haman and Mordecai. And he thought, he, and he thought soon to lay hands on Mordecai, that's Haman, alone, for they, um, for they had shewn him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the, the whole kingdom of Asareras, even the people of Mordecai. In the month, that is, the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of the king Asareras. They cast poor, that is the lot, that is the lot before Haman from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar. And Haman said unto the king Asareras, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of the king of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keeping they the king's laws, therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have the, the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadath, Ham, Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Um, I think that's all I'm going to read right there. So Haman is given uh, is given the um, go-ahead to destroy the Jewish people throughout the whole kingdom. Okay, now I want to go to chapter 2 of Esther. Starting at, uh, no, I'm wrong, chapter 4 of Esther, starting at verse 12. And now Mordecai is uh, in sackcloth, sackcloth and ashes and is mourning, and, and Esther wants to know why. She's the queen of, of Persia, she's Azarar's wife. And they they don't know she's a Jew, um, but she her cousin is now in mourning, and she wants to know why. So this starts at verse four, chapter four, verse twelve. And they told to Mordecai Esther's word, and Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, "Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time." Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise for the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knowest whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then answer. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present, present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, nights or day, night or day, I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go into unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now I want to read Esther 5, starting at verse 1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house, 
over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight, and the king held out, it, out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand, so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be even given to thee to half of the kingdom. And es Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, that the king and Haman come in this day into the banquet that I have prepared for him. So then they go to supper. There's a feast prepared. I want to now read 7, Esther chapter 7, starting at verse 1. So the king and Haman came to the banquet which Esther the queen, with Esther the queen. This is the second feast, okay? The first feast, and now this is the second one. And the king said unto Esther on the second day of the be that at the banquet of wine, What is thy portion? Oh, excuse me, what is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my portion, excuse me, at my petition, and my people at my request. If we were sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. For we, excuse me, for we were sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondsmen and bondswomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not contravail the king's demand, damage. Excuse me. Contravail the king's damage. Then the king Asararis answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he and where is he that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and queen. I just want to make sure that's where I wanted to stop. No, I want to read further. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there were that there was de evil determined against him by the king. And the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereupon Esther was. Then said the queen, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the words went out of the king's mouth, he covered Haman's face. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold, also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who was who had spoken good for the king standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Okay, now I want to read Esther chapter this is my last one in Esther, chapter chapter nine fourteen. And the king commanded it so to be done. This is after they made a decree that the Israel, the Jewish people had were allowed to defend themselves against the onslaught of their enemies. And the king commanded it so to be done, and the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews, interesting that he had ten sons. Does kind of remind you of ten kings, ten toes? For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day of the, also the month of Adar, and slew three hundred men at Shushan. But on the prey they laid not their hand. But the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together and stood for their lives, and had rest from their enemies, and slew of their foes seventy and five thousand but they laid not their hands upon the prey. And on the thirteenth day of the month of Adar, and on the fourteenth day of the same rested day, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. <clears throat> but the Jews that were at Shushan assembled themselves together on the thirteenth day thereof, and on the fourteenth thereof, and on the fifteenth day of the same they rested, and made a day of feasting and gladness. Okay, 
Now, I want to read uh, just a couple of verses from Mark. Chapter 2, starting at verse 19. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast in those days. And I want to read 1 Corinthians 7. 5 through 11. Mm. Well, it's not, that's not right. 1 Corinthians 7. Excuse me. 1 Corinthians 7. Oh, just one verse there. Uh, verse 5. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. And I want to now read Psalms 23. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay. Now, I will tell you what this dream was first. And I believe it has direct correlation to the book of Esther. Um, anyway, the dream was, I was with a small group of people. We were seemed to be in some sort of desert community. Um, and it was very dark. It, it had, we knew that we had to escape, um, men, women, and children. It was a very small group, but we knew it was a time for us to escape. And we were planning our escape as we were talking outside these tents. And the sky was very dark. It looked like it was going to rain. In fact, it did start to rain. It started to pour. And in fact, it started to flood. And as this whole area was flooded with water, um, we were... We, we said, this is the time that we, we have to go. So we all started to walk through this water that was rising. And we knew that we had to go to a, a we came to what looked like a set of very steep stairs. It, the rain was pouring down. It was very dark. And, and uh, we were just covered with filth. It was just so dirty because the, the mud was coming up and we were just covered. But, and it made us all very dark, so it was very hard for us to see. Now, what was interesting was behind us, we knew that the, what I what I called it, um, what I, when I thought about it, I called them the wicked sisters. <laughs> these, these women who were behind us, for some reason we wanted to, we didn't want them to see us escaping. And for some reason we felt that they were hindering or keeping us in bondage, these wicked sisters, for some reason that we wanted to escape from them and there were, there were one of the reasons why we wanted to escape. And so we were trying to go up the, we went up these stairs, but we knew we were right behind us, right behind us also trying to escape were these wicked sisters and they were getting closer to us. So we were running up these stairs, um, in the dark, trying to get away. And I knew off to the side, um, I, well, I wasn't alone. There was, like I said, a group of people. And there seemed to be a man and also kind of a leader gentleman. And for some reason, we came to this consensus, consensus because these wicked sisters were right on our heels behind us trying to escape on the same set of stairs that went up to this mountain, uh, mountainside. Um, we'd better pull off to the side on this little um, ledge and that would hide us basically as the wicked sisters ran past us. They wouldn't see us because it was too dark and because we were clothes were all muddy and dark and so they wouldn't be able to see us standing there 
off to off the side on this little ledge. And sure enough, that's what we did. We all pulled off to the side and stood on this little ledge as the Wicked Sisters ran past us um, to the top of the stairs. And we stayed on this little ledge for till the next day, and it got lighter where our clothes began to dry, and we felt a little more comfortable to carry on, to, to continue on our journey to get out, because our goal was to go home. We knew that we were trying to go home, and our, our, our aim was to escape. Now, I don't understand all the symbologies of this. You know, just I just know that the basic premise was that we were trying to go home and we were trying to escape from the Wicked Sisters. Um, and for some reason, we didn't want them to see us. Like, we could have continued up the stairs, but we knew if we continued up the same set of stairs that we'd have to go past the Wicked Sisters. And for some reason, we didn't want to go past the Wicked Sisters. So <laughs> we went off to the side there was a, a trail or a path that went off to the side where this ledge was there was a little forest area and we decided we would go down this this pathway and as we went down the pathway not too long far down the road of this trail um one of the wicked sisters but a different wicked sister came walked past us as in the opposite direction and she was looking at us like what are you doing here <laughs> you know and we began to sing defiantly uh at first it was very softly we start we started singing a song about going home we are going home and as we passed this this wicked sister we were singing it more boldly and more defiantly like you can't stop us this is our aim and this is what we're going to do we're going home and interestingly the song sounded like a hebrew chant like a you know a jewish song um, and it was very simple, and the song was basically, uh, it kind of reminded me of, um, I can't sing it now, but it sounded like, going home, going home, we are going home. And as we began to sing it, like I said, at first it was soft, and then became very forceful and, and rebellious, like how you're not going to stop us from our aim, which is to go home. And so we boldly walked past this wicked sister on this trail on our way to try to escape to get past the other wicked sisters so that we could get home to go home to leave and get out of this bondage that we were in um and as we had finished passing this wicked sister there on the trail there seemed to be a little hut a little house and we thought well let's go into this little house and and get off the road and we in this little hut there was a little ro there was a little window it was a tiny little window and there was light coming through the window. And we knew that the the person we were with, the man that was with us, who was leading us, said, if we go through this window, we can escape. We'll get home if we can go through this window. And this, um, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm looking at this window, I'm thinking, this is a pretty tiny little window. I don't know how we're going to get through this window. But as we were standing looking at the window, the window seemed to get bigger and a little bit larger and, and got to the point where I thought to myself, well, yeah, I think we can get through this window. I think this is a window we can escape through, you know, because the window just kept seemed to, to grow as we as we were looking at the window. So I stood up to the window and opened the window to, to go see if we can get through it. Now, this is an interesting part of the, the dream. Well, all, all of it's interesting, but this part was really interesting. Off to the side... And like I said, this window was our window to escape. Off to the side, uh, several yards away, were the Wicked Sisters sitting at the top of these stairs that we were first trying to go up past. But they were sitting at the top of the stairs. They didn't know we were in this hut several yards away trying to escape or get past them. But talking to the Wicked Sisters was this man, a man who had the appearance of Middle Eastern he had dark had dark complexion and he was talking to this man to this these wicked sisters and i knew in my heart this was a very wicked man and that he was he was blocking our way from escaping and this wicked man knew that we were had somehow became aware that we were in this hut and standing at the window trying to escape and he knew he didn't inform the Wicked Sisters that we were there, but he came over closer to the window and closer to the hut 
And I kept thinking to myself, I kept trying to bring him closer, like, come closer, come closer. I was trying to tempt him, basically. Come closer to the window. And what was in my mind was, if I can get my hands on you, I will pull you through this window and beat you to a pulp. I'm, I'm serious. This is what went through my mind. I just want, just you just get a little closer now. Just come a little closer so I can grab you by the neck and wring it. <laughs> it was such an incredible urge to just want to throttle this man because this man was wicked and he was standing in our way and he was putting us into bondage. He was in cahoots with the wicked sisters and he was taunting us. And he was like, had a smirk on his face. He didn't remind me of any particular person, but he, I knew in my heart that he was Middle Eastern and, um, and he was wicked and he was blocking our way and he was taunting us. He was scorning and taunting us. But I kept thinking, just get a little closer, just get a little closer. And I was trying to, you know, just, you know, we're trying to be pretend to be friendly with you. I just want to get you a little closer. And what does that remind you? It reminds you of the story of Queen Esther. There was a man who wanted to destroy, was standing in the way of the, uh, who was actually trying to destroy the children of, of Israel, to, to destroy the Hebrew people, the Jewish people. And he was standing in the way, and he was a wicked man, and he was an enemy. And, and Esther was basically trying to bring him closer, get him a little closer, and what was what was Haman's downfall when he fell on the the couch? I mean, no, just that the fact that he was trying to destroy the queen and the and the Jewish people, but the fact that he fell on her couch in his in his desire to you know escape his own fate, that just put put the king over the top and then said you know go hang him. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, this is immediately what came to my mind when after I had this dream, was. Now that's how the basically how the dream ended. This man was just standing a little bit off to the side, a little bit out of reach, but my my desire was to grab him, pull him in, and beat the living daylights out of him. <laughs> so that was how the dream ended. Now, like I said, this brought to mind the Queen Esther story, um, that there we are going home, and there are people who are trying to hinder our escape now. Also, what came to my mind was this, um, as we know, Benjamin Netanyahu is coming to, uh, to America to speak in the Senate. And interestingly enough, it's just before Purim, uh, which is the, when the, uh, the lot was cast for the destruction of the Jewish people. Uh, but the way they escaped was when Esther called for a fast. She called for a fast and said, fast three days, <laughs> and then she called for a feast. Interesting. She called for a fast, and then she called for a feast. Now, what happened immediately after I had this dream, I didn't wake up from the dream, I saw an interesting thing I saw next was I saw what looked like a Bible verse, but I knew it wasn't in the Bible. But it looked like a Bible verse. It looked like it looked like I was focused on a page in the Bible. And it zoomed up closer like this. Zoomed all the way up to the last and it was in red letters and, and the last verse like this. It's what it looked like. And it zoomed right in. And I saw basically um like I said, it wasn't any verse in the Bible that I had ever read. But it said two words that kind of popped out uh, on this verse, and I'll show you what they were. This is it. Two words. Oh, it's backwards. Sorry. <laughs> I'll have to read it for you if you can't read back backwards. Was fasting, F-A-S-T-I-N-G. That looks like, that's actually a G. It doesn't look like a G, but that's the way I write my Gs. F-A-S-T-I-N-G, fasting. And then the other word that came up was feasting, F-E-A-S-T-I-N-G. And the word, the, if you notice that there's a very similar, they're very similar, fasting and feasting. In fact, what's the only thing that's different? The E. You add the E 
to feasting. You take fasting and you add an E and it becomes feasting. What does the E stand for? Escape. That's what the word is here. You can't, my, my writing's terrible. E S C A P E. Escape. Fasting, feasting. And this is what it's basically this, this verse popped out at me. It was zoomed into this, this Bible verse on the bottom of the page of a Bible. Like I said, it wasn't in the Bible, but it looked like it was. And it was in red letters. And it was basically saying, first comes the fasting, then comes the feasting. Fasting and feasting go together. Well, you think about it with Esther. First came the fasting, then came the feasting. The, the fasting came before the escape. The escape from their, the situation they were in. Now, I, I don't know whether this is in regards to the, to the rapture or this is in regards to the fact that Benjamin Net Netanyahu is coming and in a way for America to escape the destruction that's coming upon it or um, to for the people to be fasting for Israel right now because they are facing a very dangerous situation. They're facing their Haman or that we're facing our Haman. <laughs> who is trying to hinder our escape, I don't know. Maybe it's all of the above. Maybe it's all of the above. But for some reason, this is what came to my mind, and I knew I had to make this video right now When I, after I had this fasting and feasting. They go together, but first comes the fasting, then comes the feasting, and the difference is E, adding an E for escape. Thou shalt prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's exactly what... Esther did. She prepared a table for herself. For She prepared a table for her king in the presence of her enemies. <laughs> and the enemy became exposed. She had to bring, draw the, the enemy close in order to expose him. And he certainly did. Okay. And as a result, the people escaped and in fact defeated their foes. Seventy and three thousand. I said, "Was how much was it again?" Seventy-three thousand people. Seventy-three thousand enemies of the Jews were just destroyed that day. Let's just go back and take a look one more time. Oh, Mister. In Shushan, five hundred men. Uh, and I think it was seventy-three thousand. Um, oh, verse 15, yeah, 75,000, 75,000, wow, 75,000 people were, men were destroyed, enemies of, or not just men, I don't know if it's men, maybe it was women too, who were destroyed that day. Anyway, I'm going to put this out there as um, a sign, a prophetic word. Um, if you can if you can fast in the next few days, um, I'm I'm not calling for a full fast like an Esther fast. I don't I don't think I could do a fast like that. But if you can fast from um, certain foods, or um, if you can do a full fast, that'd be great for three days. Don't do it any longer than that. Um, even if it's just a fast from food, or you just want to drink liquid, or um, or you're fasting from meat. Um, any kind of fast that you can do for the next few days, um, this is a fast for Israel. It's a fast for yourselves because we are spiritual Israel and there are Hamans in this world who are trying to hinder our escape or hinder our progress who are, we have to get past the wicked sisters <laughs> in our escape because the flood is coming. It's very dark days and uh, there are people who are wanting our destruction. Okay, the wanting the destruction of Israel and wanting the destruction of the of the Christian people. So um, I'm putting that out there. Okay, God bless you, and uh, just give it to the Lord, and uh, I'm calling for a fast. God bless.